And that's exactly the message title tonight of the song we just sang, Be Thou Exalted. Been loosely doing a series through the book of A.W. Tozer entitled The Pursuit of God. And chapter 8 is entitled Restoring the Creator-Creature Relation. And in this chapter, he talks about the fall of man and how the fall has so deeply marred and caused man to fall in from his relationship with God and marred our true happiness, which is founded in our relationship with God. And of course, through the fall, we're all born with a sinful nature and the essence of sin is man seeking his own glory. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when we are saved, the relationship that was fallen is now restored, but not completely in the sense that we're not yet complete. We're not yet glorified. Really, salvation is the beginning of the restoring of that relationship. It does begin with the momentous justification. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are declared righteous in God's sight. But that begins the process of sanctification. That's a lifelong process whereby we are becoming day by day, growing into the image of Jesus Christ. And our sanctification will be culminated in our glorification. When we see him, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. So in this process of sanctification, really what I got from the chapter of A.W. Tozer in restoring the creator-creature relationship is that we live by a simple model. Let's keep it simple and let's keep it memorable. And the motto we live by is, be thou exalted. Rather than exalt ourselves and live for our own glory, we live for the glory of God and we live to exalt the Lord. Be thou exalted. Once the Christian life begins, this is a little key that unlocks a door to the treasures of grace. Be thou exalted. This little phrase can put simplicity into a very complicated life. Lord, in my life, be thou what? Exalted. This little expression puts a life out of joint back in its right place. That we live for the glory of God, not for the glory of self. We live in a culture of, of self-help, self-realization, self-identity, and self-exaltation. We're living in a culture where people are focused on who? Self. Because that's sin. That's what sin does. Sin causes us to turn inward and focus upon ourselves, to exalt ourselves. People today are seeking to define themselves and create an identity for themselves, but apart from God. But when we live by this phrase, be thou exalted, we find our identity in him, we find our joy in him, we find our strength from him. So we're going to look at Psalm 57. We're going to look at a, a number of scriptures, so it's more of a topical message tonight following this theme of being exalt, uh, God being exalted. But here we see it twice in this psalm, so we'll go to it. Psalm 57, verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. And let's read verse 5 together. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me, into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory, awake, psaltery and heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, 
and thy truth unto the clouds. And let's please read once again verse 11. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. So let's pray. Yes, Lord, that is our simple prayer tonight. And may we go forth with this prayer lodged in our hearts that it would never be removed. Lord, that you would be exalted above the heavens, that your glory would be above the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you give your people this desire, and may it be ours tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So exalt, of course, means what? What does exalt mean? It means to what? It means to lift up. Be exalted. Be lifted up, God. Now, why should we exalt God? Because he is. <laughs> why should we exalt God? Because he is exalted. Now, when we talk about exalt, what are some synonyms that we could say? We live for the exaltation of God, but what's a synonym to that? We live do all to the glory of God. That's some, a similar, it's a similar concept biblically what's another word you think that similarly deals with this idea of lifting up god of glorifying god look at psalm 34 how about psalm 34 where we see this in verse 3 psalm 34 verse 3 what does that say magnify and then he says there oh magnify the Lord with me and so this is something we do individually but it's something if we want to do individually God has made us to do it corporately together so here he says magnify the Lord with me let us do this hey this is fun this is happiness this is how our happiness is truly restored in in this world broken and marred with sin oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together unsaved man is unwilling to truly live by this motto let us magnify the lord let us exalt the lord be thou exalted why because they don't believe that god is truly the i am that he is the exalted one why do we live for the glory of God do all to the glory of God why do we do that because God is who in his nature what is he like he is glorious in his nature why do we want to exalt God in our lives because God is truly high and lifted up there's none like him look what it says in Revelation go to Revelation what are they doing in heaven even as we speak here on earth and the earth is on you know man is on his own parade to bring himself glory and exaltation man lives for his own exaltation unsaved man we got off that train and we got on the way of Jesus to bring him glory and exaltation but this is what they're doing in heaven right now in Revelation chapter 4 the throne chapter of the Bible we call Hebrews 11 the faith chapter, 1 Corinthians 13 the love chapter. Revelation 4 is the throne chapter of the Bible. And it says that the four beasts, and verse 8, I'm down in verse 8, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when these beasts give glory, and what's that next word? honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever they cast their crowns before the throne saying and read, read verse 11 with me please it says thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created 
So we don't live to lift up ourselves. We don't live to magnify ourselves. We don't live to make much or glorify ourselves. We live to magnify the Lord. We live to exalt and lift up the Lord. We live to, to let others know that he is great, magnified. And the word here is honor. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. That word in the New Testament is a very interesting word. It's the idea of honor. When you honor something, you set a price. You set a value on someone or something. You honor. That's the idea of that word. So God is worthy of all honor. What price do you put on God? What price can we put on him? the honor of God? Is infinite. He is the I am. That is, He is eternal. He is self existent. He is all powerful. He is all knowing, all seeing. He loves us like no one can ever love us. He is the eternal God. He gives us the breath we just took. He created us. All things are here by Him and for Him and for His glory and for His praise. And when we go back to Psalm 57, the psalmist says twice here, be thou exalted. And that doesn't mean his life is perfect. Actually, in Psalm 57, David's life is a disaster. This psalm was written when David was a fugitive. Who was trying to kill David? Saul. Saul. And so Psalm 57 describes a normal day in a fugitive's life. And there is no normal day in a fugitive's life. Every day is a day to just survive. Sleeping in caves, he's hunted, hounded, he's marked for death. Saul wants to kill him. Verse 4, who is his soul among? Go back to Psalm 57, please. Psalm 57. We'll skip it around to me. Who is his soul among? He's surrounded by who? Lions. They got their teeth out. What do they want to do to him? What are their teeth like? <laughs> Spears and arrows. Does that sound like fun? <laughs> this sounds like life and death. Every day is life and death. David's running for his life. Their tongue is a sharp sword. Look in verse 6. He's being... He's being hunted like a bird. They prepared a net for his steps. And you've seen little birds trapped in nets, or you've seen other animals trapped in those, you know, traps where they just snap shut. And it's sad to see an animal, you know, with its leg caught. I mean, you naturally feel for that animal. They're hunting David like that, like an animal. Now, in the midst of all this, though, what is David still saying? What is David still saying? Be thou exalted. In other words, David has set a price on the glory of God. He has, he has set a value in his heart. And so even though his circumstances are terrible, he still values God more than all of the Ter terribleness of his circumstance and says, I'm going to exalt God no matter what. Be thou exalted. Magnify, glorify, honor. Magnify means to make great. Glorify speaks of the heaviness of God, the brightness of God, the honor, the value of God. He is inestimable. He is he, his weight, there is no weight. He is, he is infinite in all of his attributes. He is the I am. So how do we glorify God? We all, we, we know that phrase, right? What 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. What, what is it to glorify God? It's kind of a... I mean, it's something we say and something we say, oh, I guess I'm supposed to do that. But it's how do you glorify God? How do you glorify God? You want, anybody want to say anything? Okay. By 
with our lips, praising him every day. No matter, is this a matter of how we feel? How was David feeling in Psalm 57? He says, they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. So was he feeling good? He wasn't feeling good. His soul was discouraged and depressed. Oh, I'm depressed and discouraged, so I can't magnify God. Is that true? No. He said the next word, but my heart is fixed. In other words, no matter how I feel, I will do this. I will sing praise. I will praise God. And I will awake early. I still, I don't feel like going to church, but I will awake early and go to the house of God and magnify the Lord. I'm not going to let my feelings dictate my behavior. That's, that's, that's Bible. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name forever. So be thou exalted. How do we glorify God? How do you glorify God? How, okay, by praising him. How else? It's another way we glorify God. Okay, through obedience. All right, what kind of obedience? What kind of obedience? Look at them. Do you need your body to glorify God? Do you need your body to glorify God? Can you glorify God outside of your body? <laughs> No. So your body has to come along for the ride. <laughs> That's just the way it is. You're, you're material and immaterial. So if you're going to glorify God, guess what has to do, be a part of your bringing glory to God? Your body. Now, you say, I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. That, that sounds weird. Well, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I believe what I just said is biblical. So we glorify God by obedience. And one of the ways that we definitely demonstrate obedience in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is how. How do we so live? Look what it says. Who can read those verses, verse 18 through 12? Uh, just read, for, who's got verse 18? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Brother Bill? Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Okay. So we're going to obey God. What does that What does that say? If we're going to obey God. What's What's the area of obedience there? Moral obedience. That we we don't live for fornication. Does this world live for fornication? Can you glorify God and magnify God by living in adultery or by living in fornication? No. And don't think that fornication is a problem now. But oh, in Bible days they didn't wrestle with it. No. Read all of Paul's lists of sins, and basically every list of sin always begins with fornication, adultery, lasciviousness, inordinate affection, all moral sins, then, now, throughout, throughout time, because man lives for his own pleasure, and unsaved man replaces the ultimate pleasure found in God with just the pleasure of sin for a season. So then what does the next verse say? Verse 19. Let's just read verse 19 and 20 together. 1 Corinthians 6. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So glorify God. By your obedience, by living a life separated and holy to the Lord. There's many ways we can glorify God. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 13. Please, John chapter 14, verse 13. And this is a prayer meeting. So one, what, how can we glorify God? Well, through prayer. 1 Corinthians, or John chapter 14, please read with me, verse 13 and 14 of John 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So our heart in prayer is that God is glorified. 
through Jesus Christ that God answers our prayers and men will see his greatness, his power, his glory, even through our prayers. We glorify God in prayer. We glorify God by soul winning. We glorify God by sharing our testimony. There's so many ways that we can glorify God. So be thou exalted, Lord, even in the midst of my problems. I will give you praise and glory. Be thou exalted, Lord. Look at John, uh, Psalm. Go to Psalm 21 and verse 13. Psalm 21. You know how God could be exalted? In your profession, in your work. Psalm 21 is really the psalm of the king. And David is the king. And David is writing this as a king in, in his culture and throughout Bible times as well, and even into New Testament times. Who did kings often thought they were? They were like, they were God. They demanded worship. Even some so-called leaders today. Probably the leader of North Korea has definite images of him being some form of deity, but Roman... Caesars of the past definitely did, and, and probably kings in the days of David. But here, David the king said, I will exalt you, my king. David knew he was a king under the king of kings. And he says in Psalm 21, the king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. So he says, I'm going to rejoice not in my profession, not in me being the king. I'm going to Rejoice in the Lord's salvation that he is the king. And how does this psalm end? We won't read the whole psalm. But David simply saying, I'm going to exalt God in my profession. So again, whatever your work is, whatever you do during the day, so-called from nine to five, exalt the Lord. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Let others see your glory, your greatness, and receive honor. The last verse of Psalm 21. Let's read verse 13. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Many, is, is this true? Many look for human glorification through their own job. Many look to be praised and be mag many look for self-magnification and to be, be made known and to be viewed as great by others, right, through their job. Many people feel that they could achieve greatness through their job. And so they're looking to be magnified through their work, but not the Christian. The Christian is not saying, I'm going to do this job so that others will know I'm great. That's not our motive. The Christian will go to his job now and say, I want others to know my God is great. Be thou exalted. You see, that's a big difference. You see how different we are from this world. Well, many things that we could say here. So many verses I actually looked up, but do you know this, though? When you choose to exalt the Lord and not self. To exalt the Lord and not pride, to find your joy in the Lord and not money, not personal ambition, but to exalt the Lord, you step out of the parade of this world that is a parade of self-exaltation. Here's an amazing thing. This is an amazing thing. And the amazing thing, it's in the Bible, so go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2. And the man of God is speaking to the disobedient priest of Israel at the time, Eli. Remember Eli? Remember his two sons? Remember their names? Hophni and Phinehas, those rascals. And Eli... And, well, especially his sons allowed their fathers, took their father's profession to magnify themselves. And then Eli did not rein them in and he did not discipline them. And the man of God comes to Eli 
with this very strong rebuke in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So question, did Eli and his sons honor God or lightly esteem God? They lightly esteemed him. And then basically what happens after this is very shortly after this, Eli is going to be dead. His sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are going to be dead. One of their sons that was born is going to also um, be called Ichabod. The glory is departed. And so God brought judgment upon Eli and his house. But here's the amazing thing. God says... Them that honor me, I will what? I will honor. You highly esteem God. And the word honor actually in the in the Hebrew is the same word glorify. Honor and glorify is the same word kabod. God saying, those who glorify me, God says, I will glorify that person. That's a, isn't that amazing? Did you know that? The one who exalts the Lord will be exalted. By God, not by men. Now we don't we don't say I'm going to exalt the Lord so I could be exalted. No, we exalt the Lord because He is worthy. We magnify the Lord because He is glorious. We we live to honor God because He is all honor. But the amazing thing is, God says, "This is what God says: Them that honor Me, I will." Isn't that amazing? Isn't God good? Look at Psalm 91. Similar idea. Just going to look up a few verses here. So be ready. Get your Bibles. Get your cell phones, whatever you're looking at here. But we're going to look up a few verses about this. Look at Psalm 91. And verse 15. And let me even back up to uh, verse 14. He says, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. God says, the one who loves me, I will, I will exalt him. I will set him on high. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Isn't that good? We're here tonight to call upon God. And what does God promise? He will answer. And then he says, I will be with him in trouble. Anybody have any trouble tonight? Okay. He said, you call upon me. I will be with you. I will not leave you in your trouble. And I will deliver him. And what? I will honor him. God says, those that honor me in prayer. That's a promise. Isn't that amazing? God would honor us? That God? See, people are looking for the honor of the world. Why? We can have the honor of God. And I could go on and on with this, and I will. Go to Psalm 3. <laughs> because this is so good. This is what we should live for. This is the living for the glory of God. Psalm 3. And I looked up the word exalted. Be thou exalted. So here's the word exalted relating to him. The, 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 a man who's exalting God will be lifted up. Psalm 3, verse 3 says what? Be thou, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory. Okay, so he says, God, you are my shield, and you are the one I live for. I live for your glory. I live because of your mighty greatness. But then he says, and the lifter up of my head. And that word lifter up is literally the exalter of my head. In other words, sometimes we do get down and we get discouraged. But God is the one who lifts up our head so that we look to him. And we can ever lift up our head and look to him and overcome our discouragement and our depression. 
and many verses like this. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. God lifts us up. He exalts us. Those who exalt God will be exalted by the Lord. Those who honor God will be honored by the Lord. Look at Psalm 18. Please, Psalm 18 and verse 46. Psalm 18, verse 46, it says, we sing this, The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Right? Be exalted. So, be thou exalted, Lord. That's the, that's the song. And then it says in verse number 48, let's read that, read that together. It says, He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. And that little phrase, you lift me up, is the same word exalt. So he exalts God, and what does God do to him? Exalts him over his enemies. What I'm saying is, we don't, we, we, the world has nothing over this. <laughs> when God exalts us, what, what kind of exaltation can the world give? You can win the, you can win the Super Bowl a trophy every year, and you won't have the honor that God can give. You can win the Grammy Award, the Emmy Award, the whatever award. award. This world wants to award itself, haven't you noticed? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the awards of this world are highly esteemed in this world. But the greatest reward to live for is to live for the glory of God, and then he will exalt us. To be with him. Jesus said, go to the New Testament just for a few verses here. Look what Jesus said in John chapter. John chapter, what's that verse? Uh, 12, John chapter 12. And verse number 26, please. John chapter 12. 12 and verse number 26. Read that verse with me together, please. It says, If any man will serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. There it is. God is honor. That is, his value is infinite. But God says, if you live understanding my infinite value, I will honor you. God says, I will honor you. You can't beat that to get the honor of God. What keeps men from this? Go to John 5. Look what Jesus said in John 5. What keeps man from living for the honor of God? John chapter 5, verse 44. There's, this is what Jesus said. What does it say? Who's got that verse? Can I read it? Brother Bill? John 5, verse 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Okay. So, what here keeps man from faith in God. What almost makes faith in God impossible? What? Seeking the honor that just comes from man. When people get fixated on seeking the honor of this world, and that honor could be money, or it could be the prestige, it could be the reputation. You want others to think something of you, or if that's your only focus, and people will say, they, they say that people will, a lot of music artists do this, they sell their soul to who? To the devil in order to be, get the, the fame of this world. And it keeps them from faith in God, is what Jesus is saying. How can you believe if you live for the honor of man and you do not seek the honor that comes from God only? So finally, go to Philippians chapter 2. And 
And this is how Jesus lived on this earth, is it not? How did Jesus, what did Jesus live for on this earth? He lived for the honor of who? His Father. In the most infinite way. For he humbled himself more than anyone could ever humble himself. He humbled himself from the glories of heaven and came to earth to be beaten, despised, spat upon, and nailed to a cross. He honored God through it all. He humbled himself by honoring God. And now what has God done toward his only beloved son? To the son of his love, to the only begotten son of God. Philippians chapter 2 says in verse 7, Philippians 2, 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so, beloved, this is why we're here tonight, to humble ourselves and bow our knee to the name of Jesus Christ, whose name is above every name. And as we live for his honor and we humble ourselves to live for his glory, then he will lift us up. He will exalt us to live forever, yea, with him. And then he will give us the strength to endure through this life. And he will put his honor in that sense upon us. For in Christ, we have the honor of God. God says, those that honor me, I will honor. So let us go to the Lord tonight. Let us exalt his name and let us pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this night. Oh, Jesus Christ, we thank you that you went to the cross and you fixed a price on our value, which was your precious blood. I often think, Lord, you overpaid for me. Not worth that price. But, Lord, you fixed a price on the soul of every one of us. And the price you fixed to ransom us was the very blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that that, that price shows infinite love that you have for us. So we thank you, Lord. And we know that your infinite love for us demands and it commands our honor to be given to you. So help us to live for your honor and to be thou exalted in our lives. Help us to live by that simple motto. Be thou exalted, Lord, even in this time tonight. Be exalted over all of our possessions. May we use our possessions to bring you glory. Be exalted in our friendships, Lord. Be exalted in our our, our jobs and our profession and our daily work. Be exalted in, in our goals and our dreams, the ambitions that we do have, that you put in our heart to accomplish things in this world. Be exalted in them, Lord. Be exalted in all things, Lord God, in our life. Help us to live, not for our honor, but for yours. Not for the praise of men, but for the praise of thee, O God. And Lord, as Tozer even says in this chapter, that your honor is safe in the hands of the consecrated hands of those who live for your honor. So, Lord, we pray, God, that you would count us faithful for this great ministry of winning souls, of preaching the gospel here in New York City. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name.